How you doing, boys and girls? Well, if you remember from last week, I received a phone call from Corky, and I thought he had been arrested in St. John's. Well, I wasn't arrested at all. I was over there working for today. Down at the police station? Yeah. Well, I went into St. John's, and while I was there, Lieutenant Gary Brown gave me a tour of the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary, and I found out about fingerprint taking, and I took a look at the communication center. Well, today, we're even in for more fun. I get to go for a ride in a patrol car, and I get to see what happens in a real police lineup, and I talk to Lieutenant Gary Brown, and I find out how you become a police officer, and some of the things that a police officer has to do. That's coming up today, right here on Skipper and Company. Stay tuned. <laughs> Yes, it is. Uh, police officers, uh, investigators in particular, have a, a responsibility for two things uh, initially, and that is to find out if a crime has been committed. Uh, then we have to find out who committed the crime. The lineup room plays a very important part in helping us sometimes find out who committed the crime in that we bring in people, suspects, and put them in with other people up here on the platform, and then we have our witness go in behind the one-way mirror here, okay. and uh, we have them look at these suspects through the glass, and they will point out anyone who may have been involved, they may have witnessed in a crime, or the person who committed the crime, and this is very helpful to us. So you have to find people, I guess, more or less the same size and the same weight and that sort of thing. Well, yes, uh, that's very important. You have to have people uh, who are about the same size, about the same height. Uh, for instance, we couldn't have a person standing there who has a beard like yourself and then seven or eight other people not having a beard. Uh, that would be very obvious then if you were the uh, person who committed the crime, for instance. That's a good point. That's a good point. Right there. That's a good point. Is it possible to, to ever see a lineup take place? Is Sure, we could uh, conduct a lineup this morning for you on a, a small scale, I guess. I don't I, know I, if we'll round up seven or eight people that we'd need for a lineup. But you mean we right now we could do Sure, it? we could. Oh, that's good. Well, I'll go this way. And we'll, uh, okay. We'll find, and you're going to set up a real lineup? Oh, this is going to be terrific. Oh, so that's... Now, we're looking through the two-way mirror from here. That's correct. The one that we were in the room before, and I showed you the one-way glass. Well, we're on the other side of that right now. Okay, well, that's good. So they can't see me, and we're safe up here. No, when the suspects are brought into the room now shortly, they will not be able to see you. The lights in that room are very bright, and plus the fact that this is a one-way glass, they cannot see you. So just take a careful look at each one, which is the usual procedure, and make a selection if you see the person responsible. All right, oh boy. Here they come now. All right, now, Constable Snow, you want me to take a close look at these suspects and find out which one's been stealing some of my jokes? Yes, Skipper, that's right. Okay. Let's have a look at this fellow. Mm, no, no, not him. No, no, don't think it's him either. Uh, no. Oh, wait a second, wait a second. I recognize that beagle beak. Oh, 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 is that you? <laughs> I fooled you, Skipper. Had you going for a second. Yeah, you're having a lot of fun down here this morning, aren't you? Sure am. <laughs> 
Well, I can see what you mean by finding it difficult to get the people all the right size and the shape to match up, you know, with the lineup. Yes, it's particularly hard to find seven or eight people who look and sound like Corky. <laughs> well, I'm glad this is just a simulation, and he's not in a real lineup, because I know you just did this for my benefit to show me what goes on. That's right. Connie Snow, thank you very much for showing me what happens in a lineup, and... Uh, I hope I'm never in one and I don't have to see you again. I hope not. <laughs> not under these circumstances. Thank no. you. Well, Lieutenant Brown's waiting for me, so I'll get underway. Thanks again, Constable. Okay, bye. Bye now. Wait a oh, my thunder, real patrol car. Uh, you must be Constable Robert Escott, is that right? That's true, sir. How do you do? I'm Skipper, and Lieutenant Gary Brown said you're the fellow that's going to drive me around. That's correct, Skipper. All right, uh, Robert, what do I have to do? Just jump in, Skipper. Just jump in? <laughs> Don Johnson, eat your heart out. <laughs> Oh boy, flashing lights, a real patrol car. All right, officer, take her away. Oh. You know, uh, Constable Escott, you must have an awful lot of responsibilities being a, an officer in a patrol car like this. Yes, sir, there are an awful lot of responsibilities. What sort of things you got to look out for most of all? Well, a lot of it is uh, looking after the motorists. You have to make sure that they are upholding the law. You're checking people walking, pedestrians, uh, school kids especially at this time of the day. And you're answering a lot of complaints. All the complaints that come into the police department are answered by the street patrol, which is what I am a member of. We are the first officers on the scene of any particular complaint. You know, I, I can't help but think that boys and girls, of course, you know, drive in the cars with their parents, but a lot of youngsters are on skateboards these days and bicycles, and what should they do if they, they hear a siren approaching? The first thing that one should do when, they're, when they hear a siren or a, to see the lights of a patrol vehicle or any emergency vehicle is to get completely off the road safely. Uh, the thing is, the lights, the emergency lights or a siren, are not operated on an emergency vehicle unless it is an emergency. And when that takes place, we need as much room as we, as we can possibly get. So boys and girls can really help if they get out of the way as soon as possible. They sure could, Skipper. Now, another thing, too, you know, in this day and age, uh, buckling up and seatbelts is a very important thing for children to know uh, if they're in anybody's car. That's true also, Skipper. Uh, seatbelts do save a lot of lives. It's the law now in Newfoundland and practically all across the country to have people, not just kids, but all people, buckle up in seatbelts. Uh, smaller kids, infants, are required to be in car seats, and they do save lives. Uh, kids should be buckled up in the rear seat. All right, now, too, uh, we were talking once about youngsters being left alone in the cars. Does this create any problems for you fellows? This creates great problems, Skipper. The thing being that... Uh, a parked vehicle especially, whether it's running or not. Uh, we've had a few incidents recently actually where the vehicles have been knocked out of gear and they've rolled into parked vehicles and they could possibly run into some pedestrians and sooner or later somebody's going to be killed by uh, an, an innocent child in a vehicle just because it was left unattended. So it's against the law to have a, a child left in a car unattended? It is. It is, uh, it is against the law. And in the event that the vehicle's left running, it's very easy for a child to get asphyxiated and be overcome by carbon monoxide poisoning, and that means sudden death. Also, heat frustration sometimes in the summertime? Definitely, Skipper. Well, you have an interesting job indeed. Robert, any chance of us uh, perhaps uh, trying to catch a speeder this morning? Yes, sir. No trouble at all. We'll give it a try? We'll give it a try. Okay. <laughs> So this is it, is it, Robert? We just sort of stay parked here like this? You pick out a location and you set yourself up for radar? Yes, sir. That's all there is to it, Skipper. Now, this looks a little bit intricate. Can you, can you show me some of this radar stuff here? How that, uh... Now, that, that's, that's a whole new gizmo to me. I don't know what that is at all. This is, uh... This is a little computer, Skipper, is what this is. A computer? It sends out a signal, and the difference between how fast it goes out and how fast it comes back is how you tell or how it tells how the speed of the, of the oncoming or the going vehicle is. So it really doesn't matter if somebody's going in your direction or coming in the opposite direction, you can still tell if they're speeding. Yes, sir. And not only that, we don't always have to be parked like we are right now. We can do it while we're driving. 
we can get them coming towards us, we can get them going away from us, whether they be going faster or slower, it doesn't matter. We can always tell what your speed is. Of course, people shouldn't be speeding anyway, but people no, sometimes are afraid they're late for work or they're late for school or something, and they get to do something dangerous, and speeding is very dangerous, isn't it? And every person you stop has always got a good excuse. <laughs> Ain't it the truth? Well, they've always got excuses, but they're never good enough. All right. Now, we just sit here now, and we're going to wait for a speeder. Is that what we have to do now? Yes, sir. Okay, well, let's see who we get. <laughs> Okay, uh, Constable, uh, does that mean we got a speeder? That means exactly that, Skipper. We've got a speeder. All right, let's go. You've got the speeder pulled over the side of the road. What happens now? Now then, Skipper, I'll go up and ask him for his driver's license, registration, and vehicle insurance. Make sure everything is all legal. Find out if he's after been drinking before he got behind the wheel of the car. And, of course, I'm going to have to issue him a ticket for speeding. Well, I'm certainly glad that this is just all an enactment uh, by your department here. And the children know that we're not really uh, doing this... You know, and it isn't a really a real speeder out there, but that's what happens when a real speeder is pulled over to the side of the road. And that's exactly what happens, Skipper. Okay, so they have to have all the papers with them at all times. And... Well, it, all those things are required by an operator of a vehicle. They have to have them at all times, and that's it. That's the law. Well, Constable Escott, i got to tell you, this has been a learning experience for me, and uh, I'm going to make sure that I remind the children and their parents not to speed, that's for certain. What do you say we better head, head back to the station house? I hate to leave Corky back there on his own. Who knows what might happen? They might have him locked up by now, Skipper. <laughs> All right, let's head back. Dum, da dum, dum, dum. <laughs> well, you know, Gary, I gotta admit, boy, I never thought there'd be so much to see and so much to do in a police department. There's a lot. You gotta, you fellas have to know an awful lot of things, don't you? There are a lot of things to see and do in the police department, yes. Gary, how does a, how does a young man go about joining the police department in this day and age? Well, not only the young man, uh, Skipper, it's uh, a young female also. Oh, of course, that's right. That's so, uh, so you have to be uh, finished high school and 19 years of age, and you put in an application, and we uh, advertise each year. And then uh, the, this year alone, to give you an example, there was approximately 2,000 applications for 15 positions with the force. And I'm the officer in charge of police recruiting. So the people p uh, put in the advertisement, they then have to first stage is to write a written examination. And then those who pass a written examination go on to the next part of the process, which is a physical fitness exam. And after the physical fitness examination, you then have to go on, those who pass, to an interview. And after the interview, the uh, candidates are basically tabulated in a, uh, in a sort of a scoring fashion. And then from there, the top 15 are chosen. It's a very hard uh, process. And we travel all over Newfoundland and Labrador, the recruiting team, doing this. And if they're, once they're finally accepted, then they've got to start learning all of these things I've been looking at today. Then their work only starts when they're accepted. Ours is finished as far as the recruiting is concerned. That's correct. And they have to do training at the Atlantic Police Academy for 52 weeks now. You know, Gary, I know you're talking about a lot about joining and crime, uh, you know, techniques, but you also work on a lot of crime prevention. Isn't that true? Uh, yes. Crime prevention is a very important aspect of policing for all our police officers, uh, Skipper, in the sense of... You know, what's causing the crime? Why are young people or why are certain people doing armed robberies and things like that? So we look at the preventative aspect. And there's a special unit called the Crime Prevention Unit who focus on the whys and wherefores of crime. And we go into the community and we work very closely with the community in doing crime prevention. But again, just to tell you about how the, the police role has changed over the years in some of the things that you've seen, we could take a young police officer now just from his car and say, look, you have to go down to Holy Heart school at uh, 2 o'clock and give a, uh, uh, a lecture on uh, sexual assault to 2,000 students. So you can see how the role has changed and all these things are necessary, Skipper, in becoming a police officer today. Now you also have things too that are, that are worthwhile and I guess they exist in big centers uh, all across the country you know, to one form or another. And that's things like block parents and neighborhood watch. Uh, how, how do they sort of work? They're all very important, uh, especially for our, our young children watching your program today, Skipper. The block parent is probably one of the, the finest programs. It tells children that 
this home that you see the uh, familiar block bearer sign in has been okayed by the police department and the people inside are good people and if you do indeed get in trouble now we mean trouble we don't mean going in for a drink of water or something like this because it's not fair but if you're in serious trouble maybe feeling sick or a dog bite or something like that or someone is threatening you or going to beat you up but not only for the young people but we also use the block parent homes for our senior citizens because it also tells them the same thing so there are many programs like that neighborhood watch again it's the whole community working together skipper it's not just our job as police officers to do uh, policing the whole community must get involved because it is where you and i live and our young children who are watching so in order to make a better community we all have to play a role together and work together I guess that's what makes it work all right. Now, there's also things, too, that they have uh, identification programs that you can tell people about or they can phone the local stations wherever they are across the country, and there's things that they can do to help protect their homes this way as well. Yes, and, and that's for sure. And another great program for our young listeners watching uh, Skipper today is the operation identification for your bicycles. Because bicycles today, uh, as a father of three, they're very expensive. You know, two or three hundred dollars, no problem. And the kids, we often have bikes brought in, Skipper, they can't identify them, so they won't be able to get them back. It looks like they're a bike. So it's very important for the young people listening uh, today if they would make sure that their bicycle has an operation identification number on it, and it can only be their bike. So if it is stolen, they can come at the police headquarters, no matter where they live, and pick up their bikes. And mom and dad will indeed will be very happy because they don't have to pay out that extra money, and the insurance companies will be happy, and everybody is happy. You know, Gary, I'm going to ask you one, one final thing I'd like to know now. Youngsters are here and there after school and all times of day, and, and sometimes they might see what they think is a crime being committed, and little children might be a little scared of that and not know what to do. What should they do? The most important thing to do uh, is, especially for young children, we don't want them to get involved. It's our job, the police department. Uh, go to someone's house, someone they respect, or a teacher, or a friend, or a mom, or dad. Or a block parent. Or a block parent, and tell them what they saw, and they will call the police. But we don't want to get our young people involved. But we do say to them, be very, uh, uh, you know, noticing things and uh, that you see going wrong in your community. So it's important for them to help us. But the best way for to help us is be alert, and don't get caught in places where they shouldn't be. Well, that's a good idea. There's so many things in this world and so much safety that children have to think about. We hear about latchkey children, children are home after school, you know, alone, and uh, this sort of thing. Is there anything you could give them advice on there? Just uh, the, the main thing I can say in, in all aspects of child safety, uh, Skipper, is just to be careful and to avoid situations. And if you're told to do something by your parents, there's a reason for it, and follow their orders. It's very important to know the numbers of your police departments, fire departments, poison control. Have those number, uh, numbers near your telephone so if something does happen when you're home by yourself, you can quickly dial and say, look, police, please come and who you are and things like that is important. But be safe and, and it's a good time and young people got to enjoy themselves. And the police department want our young people to have lots of fun and we're not trying to make it a hard place for them to grow up, but just be safe, be wise. Well, I'm looking at you and you look like you're a fine specimen of an officer. I'm going to ask you a question. Why did you decide, personally, for you to become a police officer? Can you remember back? Yes, I can remember back, and I think I have a little bit of an edge. My dad was a member of the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary and retired, so I grew up in the police family. My uncle was one also. So I know the, uh, uh, how the police profession runs, and I'm very proud to be a member. And maybe someday one of my boys may decide to, to put on the badge and uniform and serve the public. So you're keeping up the family tradition? Yes, I'm trying. Now, Gary, there's a there's a identification tag program for children with clothing or something. I don't know all that much about that. Are you familiar with that one? Yes, it's an identification tag that can be put on uh, children's clothing, on their shirts and on their pants. And what it's used for, Skipper, is once the parents sew it on, no matter how many washes, the name will stay on it. And then a child, if a child is knocked down, uh, you know, involved in an accident of some sort or, or, or violently sick, uh, a person, a police officer, whoever in the hospital can check and phone the parents immediately and get a, a quick uh, medical history or whatever. It's a very good program, and, and it doesn't cost the parents anything, and you can pick them up at your local police department right across the country, and I think it's, a, it's an excellent idea. And again, it's just another small safeguard for protecting our uh, most precious resource, our young people. You said it right. We, uh, we all love our children so much, uh, wherever they happen to be, and we've been giving them a lot of advice. I wonder, Gary, is there anything that we should ask of the parents, and maybe we could pass on a suggestion or two to them. Yes, it is important. Uh, probably one of the main things, Skipper, is for the parents to know where their children are at all times, and also to have good communications with them. It's important that if a child has something to say to mom or dad or whoever, that they be up front with them. If they're, if they're trying some things that aren't right, talk about it. 
don't try and put it out of your mind or don't try and just scold them because of it. It's good for the, both sides. The young people have to talk to, to their parents and who, people who they respect also. But the parents must keep a good line of communication open at all times and then you can deal with things one-on-one. -on -one. It's very important for the parents to be open and, and vice versa the children with their parents. And children always try to be good and if you give them a chance, I, I think they always will. They are the most honest uh, people in the world, a child. I'll tell you, once you're asked, you're going to get the answer whether you like it or not. You know, speaking about childish uh, and childish behavior, I was wondering where... Oh, there he is. There's Corky. I was just wondering where he was going, because we, we got to get back to Rainbow Point. i got some youngsters coming over to rehearse. How you doing, fellas? Corky, you Hi, finished Corky. up? Oh, yeah, I got everything all cleaned up. Ship, uh, ship shape, Skipper, you know, and uh, oh. I, I really appreciate the, the, day, the day's work down here, uh, Lieutenant. Boy, thanks. I just windows, too, you know. Yeah, you're more than welcome. Good to have you, Corky. You can come anytime. Thank, any Thank you very much. Actually, I owe my vote of thanks, too. If it wasn't for him and me thinking he was under arrest, I would have missed all this. So, uh, we're my so, thanks so also. So pleased to have you, and, and welcome, and take your time back to uh, your uh, Rainbow Point, and we look forward to seeing you again. Yeah, we got to get back. There's kids coming over to the lighthouse to rehearse. Lieutenant Gary Brown, it's been a pleasure. Thanks very much. See you. Take care. Bye Bye All right, Gorgie, out we go. So long. Bye-bye. Boy, when I got that phone call from you, you know, and you told me you were at the police station, I thought you were under arrest. Oh, gee, I'm sorry to frighten you like that, Kevin. Well, we had a good time. We got oh, yeah, you saw the building and everything. I mean, that's some place. Man. Well, yeah. I want to make sure we get back because the kids are coming over to the lighthouse to rehearse and you're okay. Don't go away. There's more to come. Ooh, oh boy, well, I, I'm sorry to... What a day, what a day. I, yeah, I'm sorry to frighten you, Skipper. I mean, you oh. thought I was arrested and everything. I, Corky, I should have left a note the for you. The telephone line you know. was so bad. Yeah. When you said that you were in the police station, I automatically assumed, you know, that you had been in trouble for something. And that was my mistake. But I owe it all to you. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have had a tour of the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary Building in St. John's. What a day that was. Right? Well, it turned out to be a good day. Oh, it, was a day. it was Skip. a good day. It was a good day. What did you, what did, what did you think oh. was the most interesting about all of that? Well, there were so many things, you know. I mean, from the fingerprinting to the computer to the to the uh, <sighs> rifle range and all the technical equipment that they got and the programs and everything. You know, I, nice had no, I had no idea because, you know, when you get right down to it, the police officer is just like one of the rest of the citizens and they do their job and they're the best they can they have their own families they have their own lifestyle and i can tell the boys and girls at home you know you boys and girls if you have any problems you're lost sometime or anything ever happens if you see a police officer talk to the police officer he won't do you any harm and he loves you and that's what he's paid for and he'll help you every time is that right Courtney? that's right that's right. I, I know a fellow one time went, in, went into the police station, you know, uh -huh. and he came in and he said, hey, hey, can somebody help me, please? He said, uh, I've been robbed. So the, 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 the officer, you know, wanted to jump up and help him immediately. He said, well, oh, give me a description of the man. He said, well, no, it, it wasn't a man. He said, uh, it, was, uh, it was an elephant. What? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. An elephant was oh, the yeah. robber? Oh, yeah. And, and, well, the police sergeant kind of gave him a strange look, too. You know, he said, oh, yeah, you figured the guy was putting them on. He said, an elephant, I see. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. All right. He said, well, what kind of elephant was it? Uh-huh. He said, well, you know, what do you mean, what kind of elephant? It was a big gray elephant, four feet, big, long trunk. You well, know, there's different elephants. One. There's an Indian elephant. There's an African elephant. Well, one as big that's as... that's what the cop said to the guy. As a matter of fact, he said... There's a difference in elephants, Mr. Smarty Pants. He said, you know, like Indian elephants got bigger ears than, than the African elephants. So he said, uh, Mr. Smarty Pants, you tell me. He said, what kind of elephant was it? And the guy said, gee, I don't know. He was wearing a mask. <laughs> <laughs> he was wearing a mask. <laughs> he should have told that to the boys down at the cassette. <laughs> yeah, I'd still be down there. <laughs> well, you know, Corky, i got to admit, this has been a day that's been different for me than most other days. You see how another man earns his living, you see how other people work. And the members of the Newfoundland Constabulary, the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary, that's their job. They're professionals. Their job is to protect citizens, you know, and they want to help the honest, tax-paying, everyday person, the people who kind of work every day, and they're all worried about their children. They're all worried about honesty and robbery. We have a lot to worry about, and I'm glad we have something like the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary here in Newfoundland. Uh-huh. Listen, you yeah. hungry? I am hungry. I'm starved. You want to cook you? up another one yeah, of your specialties? Yeah, let's go and cook up I'll try anything today, my friend. How about bologna under glass? Bologna under glass? I, I like that it. One. That ought to be pretty good. Bye. Oh, I think so.